This episode is sponsored by Curiosity Stream, smart TV for your smart TV. I know what you're thinking. We're going to laugh at that monkey, aren't we? And yes, we certainly are. But you should know the monkeys are laughing right back at you. What with your little floppy, uh, well, we'll get to that. But first, let me tell you about these monkeys. This is the proboscis monkey, which has a very unusual feet. All right, it has a big nose. Like rest on your chin, you could teabag yourself sort of nose. It is out of proportion, compared to our proportions anyway, and we find that funny. In nerd, the proboscis monkey is called Nasalis larvatus, which roughly translates to nose like a mask. And the person who named it that probably dressed up as a dick for Halloween. You know, like they had a mask that looked like a... Well, you get it. In any case, the proboscis monkey is part of a group of monkeys called the odd-nosed colobines. Another monkey in that group is Rhinopithecus, which roughly translates to nose monkey, a name given to a monkey that barely has a nose at all. This snub-nosed monkey can look a bit like it snorted lots of cocaine through a pair of scissors, but it's not a nut nose, though. From the side, you can see it's just very small and upturned. Sure, I think it's a bit messed up to single out a few related monkeys and call them odd-nosed, but characterizing monkeys by their noses is apparently the hot thing to do for the science hippies. Monkeys are basically divided into two main groups, Platterini and Caterini. Platterini means flat-nosed. These are the New World monkeys who often have sideways-facing wide-set nostrils, like squirrel monkeys or tamarins. Caterini means down-nosed, and these are the Old World monkeys, including macaques and apes. And the mandrill, which at least deserves a runner-up in the odd-nosed category. I mean, it looks like it rear-ended a unicorn that was stopped at a traffic light. <laughs> All the way up to the eyes. The proboscis monkey is a down-nosed monkey that took the concept and just ran with it. In males, the external portion of their nose, the part that is outside the skull, can grow so large you can't play gotcha nose with them. You'd have to use your whole fist. They don't have to cup their hands to smell their breath, though. That's a plus. But listen, there's someone else in the down-nosed group with an unusually big external nose. The second biggest. It's us. I know what you're thinking. My nose isn't that big. Of course it is. Look at that fleshy pyramid sticking out like that. I mean, come on, we have to tilt our friggin' head to the side when we want a kiss. Snub-nosed monkey can kiss straight on, no problem. I mean, if one of them sneezes, the other one might toot a little, but that's all right. I'm telling you, we look hilarious. What? No, Jerry, I'm not going to talk about the erections. Yet. Now, the male proboscis monkey's profound nasality is most likely the result of sexual selection, which is the corner of evolution where all the weird shit happens. There are a couple ways it can go down. One way is driven by how females decide which male to get busy with. For example, let's take these beards here. Let's say a female has a gene that makes her attracted to a longer tail. Now she gets out there and gets down with a longer-tailed male. Now the gene for longer-tailed males and the gene for being attracted to longer-tailed males get passed on. And now you've got males with longer tails. But if females are attracted to longer tails, then she's going to choose males with longer, longer tails. Put that on repeat and see what happens. In the case of the Sacabula, you wind up with more tail than bird. Congrats, you're a sexy bird now, but you have the flying style of a floppy trash bag that's been caught in a whirl of wind. These outsized male ornaments can also become linked to other favorable traits, in the sense that a peacock's tail might give you clues about the peacock's c**k. Well, if it had one, but you get the point, even if the peahen doesn't. <laughs> Cloaca jokes. In the case of the proboscis male, a large nose is correlated to a larger body mass and larger testicular size. And that means more sperm and a greater chance of getting pregnant. But listen, monkeys are naked, and it's not that hard to see how big they are and how big their testicles are, especially with the whole erection thing, but it's not time for that. Yet. I know what you're thinking, sweaty nipples. Maybe our unusually large human noses correlate to the size of something else on our bodies. Well, we'll get to that in a minute, but first a message about our sponsor. Curiosity Stream is for people who want to know more about, well, everything. For just $14.99, you get a whole year of access to thousands of documentary shows and movies, covering just about every topic you might be interested in. There's history, science, true crime, nature. Look at that right there. They even have one on the secrets of bumblebees. 
Finally, I'm glad someone looked into what those shady little bastards have been up to. Maybe you don't even know what you're interested in. But they've got something for that, too. 35 collections of curated programs handpicked by experts, including award-winning exclusives and originals. I'll say it again. For just the cost of something else that costs $14.99, you can get CuriosityStream for an entire year. And you can stream that to any device for viewing anytime, anywhere. I'm personally a fan of CuriosityStream and glad to have their support. Use code ZEFRANK to sign up and start watching today. Where were we? Oh, right. Is the size of our nose related to the size of another sticking out bit? Well, let me tell you, just last year there was a study in Japan where the science hippies took a bunch of dead people, pretty sure they were dead already, and what they did was measure their noses and then compared that to their SPL, or stretched penis length, which is apparently some sort of standard way of measuring a penis. News to me, <laughs> I've been doing it all wrong. And what they found were that the two measurements were highly related. A bigger nose meant a bigger SPL. Now that's not to suggest that our noses are the product of female choice sexual selection. And that might only be part of the story with the proboscis monkey. But female choice isn't the only flavor of sexual selection. Another driver is competition between males. When the bros have to fight each other to gain access to females, adaptations that help them win a fight are selected for. Often this results in the evolution of weaponry, like long canines or tusks, even in animals that only eat leaves or vegetables. The proboscis males have quite a bit of competing to do. Their social system is organized into harems, where one male has access to a number of females. I know what you're thinking, those noses don't look like weapons to me unless you count a good noodle slapping, but they still can be used in combat, sort of. These monkey harems often live close to one another, and females sometimes decide to move between them, so there's plenty of opportunities for fights as males defend their turf. Butt fighting is a real bummer. Sorry, but fighting is a real bummer. They can get hurt, and they haven't invented the band-aid yet. Why would they, with all that fur, it'd be a right bitch to take off. So if there's a way a monkey can predict that he's likely to lose a fight before it happens, that would certainly be useful in not getting dead. Now, if you can see the size of your challenger, you can just make good choices. But where they live, the visibility isn't that great, what with all the leaves. And that's where the noises come in. Proboscis monkeys make a lot of noise. It can sound a bit like a donkey swallowed a dial-up modem. <laughs> I think you know where this is headed. A larger nose helps make a louder, lower sound, and we already know that large noses correlate to large bodies. So a male can listen to another male's call and decide if he wants to rumble. And the females, they're listening in too, because a louder sound means bigger testicles. I'm telling you, it's a whole thing. So the proboscis nose might be a bit of a both end, starting to evolve as a signal for males and then driven to extremes by female choice. These monkeys have something else that's both used to attract mates and to warn other males. Go ahead, Jerry. Now, humans have more of a right place, right time sort of erection. For the proboscis monkey, the time is always and the place is everywhere. They have a brightly colored and more or less permanent erection. It's not always turned up to 11. There's the sort of everyday walking about erection. This one's measuring his SPL. And here's a more elegant cocktail party sort of erection but they reserve a more straight-up man-spreading erection as a warning for when they're about to get aggressive. We don't do that. It's a shame. Would make MMA weigh-ins more exciting. Well, Conor McGregor certainly showed up to fight. But no, we can't even use ours to flag down a bus. <laughs> Trust me, I've tried it. Bus kept going. And I know what you're going to say. I read somewhere that the human male genitalia is proportionately larger than what the apes and the monkeys are carrying about. That is like the most human thing to think. It's like how everybody says their hometown has the best drinking water. It's bullshit. The researcher Alan Dixon, son of Dix, so you know he's for real, he looked into it and found that humans are pretty unremarkable and average down there. But what about our big noses? There must be something special there. Well, no surprise, the science hippies can't even agree on it. One idea was that when we moved to colder places, bigger noses were better at warming and moistening the air. That one's refuted. Not just futed, they futed it again. There's another idea that our big noses gave us stereo smell for navigation. Not refuted, yet. And then there's the simple idea that it's just the byproduct of our bigger brains. As our skulls got bigger, our faces flattened, leaving our nose out there like a little flesh island. So just remember, if you want to laugh at a monkey with a big nose and a funny-looking penis, call up a friend and get naked. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than going to Borneo. Alright, so you want a statue of the monkey, right? 
How big? Oh, that's big. You want it, like, realistic? Lifelike? Oh, okay. Well, what about the erect, uh... Right. No, I understand. The tourists. How about this? We put grapes in front of it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's no problem. Anything else? Oh, it's a fountain? Oh, that's new. All right. Well, in Italy, a lot of times the water comes out from the tip of the... Well, hear me out. It would come up from behind the grapes in this really beautiful arc. No? Oh, I've got it. We'll make it look like it's vomiting. Projectile vomiting. All over everything. (laughs) 